Okay, so now we're looking at the problems from uh, section uh, 5.4 on combinations and permutations. And one of the most important things you have to understand is whether or not order is important in a particular problem. Okay, so if we look at two, we say three people are selected at random from the class and are permitted to skip the final exam. Is order important or not? And I'm going to, um, we'll make a little, little kind of table here. Uh, is important or is not important and in here for two it clearly is not important okay the order in which I choose those three people won't matter we put letters and numbers on a license plate well here clearly order is important right because the same letters and numbers arranged in a different way constitute a different license plate number right Okay, I pick up some change, so I pick up five coins from a dish containing ten coins. Does the order matter? No. Okay. People are lined up at the polls to vote. Some are Democrats and some are Republicans. We are either interested in the outcome of the election. This is a little tricky because it says they're, they're lined up. And usually when we have lines, we're interested in order. But here, um, we're interested in the outcome of the election the way they're lined up shouldn't make any difference, right? We select three people for a committee. The first chosen will hold the office of president, the second vice president, and the third secretary. Well, here clearly order is important because the first one and the second one, they occupy unequivalent positions. We go to the deli and we buy three kinds of cheeses for next week's lunch. Order is not important there, right? We select four men and six women to serve on a committee. Whenever you see a committee and there's no other qualifier, it always means it's not important, okay? We put five people on a basketball team. They get the position of point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. Well, here, obviously, order is, order is important, okay? The way in which you put those people in those positions are going to make different teams. Okay, and again, this one's a little tricky because they're not actually saying the first person chosen becomes the center and this and that, but um, you know, obviously, we're filling unequivalent positions, right? This is kind of like the president, vice president, and secretary problem up in number six. Okay, ten's kind of a fun problem. Um, it says uh, the king has 10 different colored flags that he uses to send coded messages to his general in the field. For example, red, blue, green might mean attack at dawn, and blue, green, red might mean retreat. Notice notice the same, the same colors but different order, right? So here order is going to be important, okay? So you should kind of notice this, that red, blue, and green, and red, blue, and green are in both flags, but the order makes a difference, right? So he sends messages by arranging three of these flags at the top of the castle wall. How many coded messages can the king send? Well, he has 10 different coded flags, right? So we're choosing from 10 flags, three of them. And here, order is important. So this tells us that we're going to be using a permutation. And our answer is going to be 10 objects permuted three at a time. And when you go ahead and compute that, I'm just going to do it by hand. It's not difficult to do it by hand, but you can do it on your calculator. You should get 120 when you plug that into your calculator. Okay. All right. Notice there is another way of doing it. There is this thing using factorials, but I'm not going to require you to know that. Okay. It's just if you know that sometimes it's a little easier than um, putting it in the calculator. Okay. 17. On Halloween, a man presents a child with a bowl containing eight different pieces of candy. He tells her that she may have three pieces. How many choices does she have? Okay, well, let's look at this. There's a there's a bag or a bowl consisting of 10 pieces, right? 
So we're choosing from a total of 10 pieces, three. And order's not important, okay? So here we're gonna be using a combination. And I take that back in this answer here. Um, up here, I computed a combination. I actually want a, a permutation. Sorry, I used the formula for combination. Um, let me just compute it out real quick. Yeah, it's going to be 720. That's what I thought. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, so for, for the combination, okay, I'm going to choose, um, the answer is going to be 10 choose 3. And now that's going to be 120 when you plug that in. Okay, 120 different choices that she has. Okay, um, on Halloween, a man presents a child with a bowl containing eight different pieces of candy and six different pieces of gum. So this is like the problem that we did in class, right? So here we have... Okay, so here's our candy. We have eight pieces here. And here's our gum. We have a total of six pieces. And he says that she can have four of each. How many choices does she have? Well, the first thing you have to realize is that, you know, the counting principle is going to come into play, okay? So the total number of choices is going to be the number of ways you can choose the candy times the number of ways she can choose the four pieces of gum, okay? So here, order is not important in both of them. Okay. So the number of ways that she can choose the four pieces of candy is eight choose four. Again, for the gum, order is not important. So this is going to be um, six choose four. Okay, And we're going to multiply these. And so we go ahead and put this in our calculator and eight choose four. ends up being 70 times 6 choose 4 which is 15 okay. and when we do that out we're going to get 1050 different possibilities Okay, so again, this is where we're using the counting principle because for each uh, choice of four candies, she has the same number of choices of gum. So we're going to multiply those numbers. Okay. All right. So here we're looking at choosing a committee and we have eight women and six men. And we want to choose five people. So our K here is equal to five. Our N here is equal to 14, okay? And we want to know the total number of committees in 23. Well, here obviously order is not important, right? So the answer here is 14 choose five. And we put that on our count. We're gonna get 2,000, okay? Now the second one's a little more interesting because here they're asking how many committees can we make of two women and three men? So here we have to think about this for a little bit. So we're drawing two women from eight. Okay, so here we're drawing two from eight. Let me do that in a different color actually. For 23. So in this case, we're drawing two from the eight. And we're drawing three from six. 
Notice this is just like the candy bowl problem we did. Okay, we're looking at these two groups separately. So now this is like my n. For the women, n is 8, k is 2. For the men, n is 6, k is 3. So your final answer is going to be 8 choose 2 times 6 choose 3. This is the number of ways I can choose the two women from the 8, the number of ways I can choose the three men from the 6. And if we put those numbers in our calculator, 8 choose 2 is 28, and 6 choose 3. is going to be 20 and we multiply those and we'll get 560 for our final answer okay the last one is asking how many com committees can we make with Jack as committee chair so now you notice that what we're doing is we have five people but one has a special position okay and the other four people are just on the committee so really what we're asking is how many ways can we choose those four people from 13? Because notice Jack is out of the pool. Right, so these four come from the 13 remaining people. So here for 25, the answer is 13 choose 4. Let me put that in our calculator. And we're going to get 715. Okay, good. Okay. So the next one's kind of interesting. It says, uh, a dinner order at Mum's Country Kitchen consists of a salad with dressing, an entree, and three sides. Okay, so we have a, a salad with dressing, an entree, and three sides. And so the menu offers a choice of ranch, blue cheese, French, or Italian. So basically we have what? We have what? We have one, two, three, four different dressings for our salad. Okay. The entrees are chicken fried steak, meatloaf, fried chicken, catfish, roast uh, beef, or pork chops. So let's see. So here are our entrees. We have how many? One, two, three, four four, five, six, six entrees. And how many sides here? We have one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten sides. Okay. So how many how many dinners can we can we make? Okay. Well, we're, we're going to assume we're only going to choose one dressing. Okay, most people don't choose French and ranch, right? So it's going to be a number of ways we can choose one from these four dressings. The number of ways we can choose one from the six entrees. And, of course, this is just four times six, okay? Because the, the, way you, the only way you can choose one out of four things is four different ways, right? But this is a little trickier because here we're choosing ten from the three, right? So this is 10 choose 3. So this is going to be 4 times 6 times, and I already did 10 choose 3 above. That's 120. Okay. So that's going to be 24 times 120. And that's 2,000. Our final answer here is going to be 2,800 and 80 possibilities okay all right uh, here we're looking at a, at a card game um, so we're, we're told that um, we're gonna draw three cards from a full deck and we want the probability of certain events so we want the probability that they're all red so again when you're looking at probability remember that the probability of an event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. Okay? So, 
if if they're all red, we knew we know that we draw how, how many red cards are there? Well, there's 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 26 red cards, right? And we drew three. Okay. So the number of the number of ways we can draw the three from the 26, which is the number of favorable events, is equal to 26 choose three. And if we put that in our calculator, that's a kind of big number. That's going to be um, 26,000. Let me make sure I believe that. Yeah. All right. 2,600, sorry. Okay. And if we look at the total number of outcomes, well, we're drawing three from 52, right? So the total number of outcomes is going to be 52 choose three. And you put that in our calculator. Okay, 52 choose three. That's gonna be 22,100. So the probability is the ratio. Okay. We can uh, cancel a couple zeros here, okay. Get 26 over 221. And we're gonna get about 11 point 76%. We compute this out. This is actually 0.11764. We're always going to round to the fourth decimal place, which ends up being 11.76%. Okay? Now I want to know the probability that exactly three of them are jacks, okay? Um, here, I think the problem had to have changed because I think now we're drawing we're drawing five cards in problem forty. Okay, we're drawing five. Okay, so we, we have to kind of think about this. This again is very much like the candy bowl problem, right? We have four jacks and we have forty-eight other cards. Okay. And we know, we, we know for a fact that we drew three jacks. That's the favorable event. So the number of ways we can draw that is going to be four choose three. And we're going to choose the other two from the 48. So how many ways can we do that? Well, that's 48 choose two. And this is the number of favorable events. Okay, four choose three happens to be four if you put that in your calculator. And 48 choose three choose two, sorry, ends up being 1128. Okay, so you multiply those two together and you're going to get 4,500, 4,512. This is the number of favorable events, the number of ways I can choose three jacks. Okay, now I have to calculate the total number of events. So really what I'm doing is I'm choosing five from 52, right? So the total number, this is the favorable. So the total number is just equal to 52 choose five. This happens to be a very large number actually. It's um, 2,598,000 960. Okay. So I'm going to take this this ratio. Okay, so the answer ends up being 4512 over 2598960. And when you multiply that all out, it's a pretty small number. Okay. When you write this out in decimal form, it's point oh oh one seven. 
which when you convert this to, um, it's actually 0 0.00173, okay, I'm gonna round that off, fourth decimal place, and when you put this in percent, it's gonna be 0.17%, so it's very, very unlikely. Okay. That should do it for section 5.4.